For this set of problems, I'm going to be given a trig identity, uh, a statement telling me that two trig expressions are equal to each other, and I'm supposed to verify that trig identity. Uh, in other words, show that those two sides are equal. The most important thing that you have to remember as you do these problems is, number one, you're not solving equations, and number two, you're really verifying that these things are equal to each other, which means you really can't assume that they're equal. You're really looking at this from the standpoint of asking, are these two statements equal? So although books are not normally going to put a question mark in there, you really want to look at it like that. And the reason I mention this, you do not want to use any of the rules that you use with solving equations. Uh, you do not want to, for example, do the same thing to both sides of the trig identity statement. And in fact, some teachers will have you draw um, a line here to represent the two different sides to remind you you don't cross over that line, you don't change something on the other side. Now, different teachers have different approaches. Um, some teachers will say that you can only show changes on one side and that you can never change anything on the other side. Um, others will say it's fine as long as you're only making one replacement at a time and you're showing each of those steps. Okay? Uh, in my examples, I'm going to try for the most part to do my changes all on the same side. Uh, every once in a while it's possible I may make a change on the other side, but in each case I'm only going to do one step at a time and I'm going to show those steps. These are really algebraic proofs showing the substitutions that I'm making. Uh, things I'm going to look for, I'm going to look for ways to write these in different forms. Uh, so I'm going to look for my basic uh, trig identities here that we've worked with a whole lot. Uh, I'm going to look, if something's not factored, I'm going to factor it to write it in a different form. If it can be factored, if I can factor out a GCF, uh, if it's written in a factored form, maybe I'll multiply it out. Uh, I'll look for things that can be written in different forms, reciprocal functions that can be written different ways. Uh, if I have fractions, perhaps I'll add those by getting a common denominator. Um, if I have a sum or a difference in a numerator, I may break a fraction up into two fractions with common denominators. So lots of different things that I can think about doing in these problems. Okay, first example here, uh, I need to write this in a different form uh, so I can try to work it out to equal this. Uh, I notice that right now it's not a, a secant squared statement. Um, it's got parentheses. One easy way to write this into a different form would be to multiply this out using the distributive property. Um, tangent times cotangent is just equal to one. Okay, cotangent is one over tangent. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, uh, and show that step there. Um, I'm actually going to do two steps here. I'm going to write down tangent of theta. I'm going to replace this with a 1 over tangent of theta plus tangent of theta. Okay? Just replaced something with an equivalent. Uh, now I'll distribute, okay? and that'll give me a tangent over tangent, uh, which is just equal to 1. So tangent theta over tangent theta plus tangent squared theta. Okay, still all equal to secant squared. Uh, this, of course, is equal to 1, so I have 1 plus tangent squared of theta, and now you see I have one of my identities over here. Uh, I know that 1 plus tangent squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta. Um, you can do your equals each time and, and write all your secant squares. I didn't change anything here, so I'm just going to show that it's equal to secant squared and end there. But notice, I showed each one of my steps, okay? Unlike a two-column proof, I didn't have to write a reason over to the side. Uh, you could do that, but uh, as long as it's clear where you've made your substitutions, where you've made your replacements, uh, where you've multiplied out using the distributive property, those are really the keys. Um, second example here. Um, this one's not real clear. Uh, on most of these problems, I'm going to choose to start on the most complicated side and work towards something that's more simple. I'm not saying you can't take something that's simple and try to make it more complicated, make it match the other side, um, but I think you're going to find that's harder in most cases. Usually, it's pretty easy to find one of these more complicated statements, replace it with a smaller statement, and you can go from there. Um, in this case, um, I know this is the same thing as tangent of theta times cosine of theta the whole quantity squared, and I know that tangent times cosine, if I look up here, um, I can multiply both sides by cosine. Tangent times cosine is sine, so I'm going to replace this with a sine. Uh, the whole statement's being squared, so I'm going to write this as sine squared of theta equals 1 minus cosine squared of theta, and at this point, I'm almost done. Um, again, this time I've been copying what's 
uh, my, my right side each time. I know that sine squared of theta, if I use this statement here, uh, is the same as 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So I can replace that with 1 minus cosine squared of theta, and that is going to match the 1 minus cosine squared of theta over on the other side. So again, you can copy these values over here if you want each time. You get lots of new identities, or if you just want to copy at the end since you don't make any changes, that's fine. Uh, last example here, uh, I have 1 plus tangent squared theta over cosecant squared theta equals tangent squared of theta. Now I could replace the tangent squared theta uh, with a secant squared of theta minus 1. Uh, would be one possibility. Again, though, I'm going to focus on the more complicated side, and in particular, I notice that 1 plus tangent squared of theta uh, could be broken up. I could write this as 1 over cosecant squared theta plus tangent squared theta over cosecant squared theta, but I notice that's one of my trig identities, okay? Uh, that's just the same thing as the statement secant squared of theta. That's going to take out addition and subtraction. I don't have any addition or subtraction over here, so I'd really like something that gets rid of that. So I'm going to write that as secant squared of theta over cosecant squared of theta equals tangent squared of theta. I'm running out of board space here, so I have to move over here. Um, I'm going to take this statement now and go over here. Um, this is the same thing as if secant of theta over cosecant of theta was being squared. And notice now that uh, a secant and a cosecant can both be moved to opposite parts of the fraction because there's no addition or subtraction. Uh, and I can write that as a cosine of theta on the bottom. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so I can move that to the top. And notice what I end up getting here. Sine over cosine is equal to tangent, so that gives me tangent squared of theta equals tangent squared of theta, and I've shown that yes, in fact, that original statement does work out to be equal on both sides. In these examples, now I'm doing two columns here, uh, two separate examples. Uh, the first example, I'm given cosine squared of theta over 1 minus sine of theta equals 1 plus sine of theta. My thought is that the uh, fraction side is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to start with that side and try to make my changes there. Um, and the thing that I notice, um, 1 minus sine squared of theta doesn't really break down. Um, cosine squared of theta at least can be written in a different form. And this is a strange case where I'm actually going to put in a statement that's more complicated. Uh, cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared of theta. I know that seems a little strange to do something more complicated, um, but I noticed something here, and, and uh, so it's kind of tricky to pick up on until you've seen it before. Uh, but if you notice, this is actually a difference of squares. One is a perfect square. Sine of theta is being squared. And we know that when you have two values, a binomial with two values, uh, a difference of two perfect squares, that you can write it as a factored form, difference of squares factoring pattern. And the reason I mention this is I want to cancel a denominator if I possibly can. And my thought here is, if I can find a, a greatest common factor to divide out the top and the bottom here, maybe I can simplify my, simplify my fraction down to something that's no longer a fraction. So as a difference of squares pattern, that's a 1 plus sine of theta times a 1 minus sine of theta. And again, if you don't trust me here, try it. You get 1 minus sine theta plus a sine theta minus a sine squared. Those two middle terms will cancel and you'll get the same thing I have here. Over 1 minus sine of theta equals 1 plus sine of theta. And notice here, I can simplify a fraction by dividing the same factor out of the numerator and denominator. Now that this is in factored form, everything's written as a product, and I can see I can divide a 1 minus sine theta out of the numerator and denominator, uh, dividing itself by itself is 1, and so that's 1 times this, which is just 1 plus sine of theta, and if you notice, that's exactly what I was supposed to get over on the other side, so that works out really well. Um, second example here, it would take a little different route. Uh, I don't have anything that I can replace that numerator with, and so this time I noticed that there's a sum in the top of the fraction. Once again, I'm going to start with the fraction instead of the non-fraction. I think that's going to be a little bit easier. Uh, so I'm going to change this 
into two fractions, okay? As long as I keep a common denominator, because we're adding or subtracting, adding in this case, as long as I keep a, a common denominator, I'm allowed to do that. So uh, secant theta is going to be my common denominator, and I get something that looks like this. Um, remember, we're shooting to get this statement over here. Um, now I can write some things in a different form because everything's written as products and quotients, which is really nice. Um, that's going to be cosine of theta. And tangent over secant is the same thing as tangent of theta times cosine of theta. And if you notice, that's exactly what I need because tangent times cosine will give me sine. And so I know that I have cosine of theta plus sine of theta. Okay, that becomes a sine of theta. And that's exactly the same thing as what I had at the start. Um, I suppose hypothetically you could show a commutative property step to, to switch the order of those two. Um, but in general, the main work has been done here. Right, to do my final two examples, got two completely separate trig identities here. Um, I notice in this case, that's not a 1 minus cosine squared of theta, so I can't make a replacement there. Um, I have two fractions. In my previous example, I took the fraction and I broke it up into two fractions. Again, this is all about writing things in different forms, trying to look for patterns that link to the different identities that we know we can use to replace statements. So if I have two fractions, one possibility is to add the two fractions. Uh, to add the two fractions, I'm going to need a common denominator. Um, the common denominator here, I'm not sure you would necessarily show this work in the diagram, but uh, basically it's going to be the product of the two current de denominators. Uh, so that means this side is going to have to be multiplied by sine of theta. I'm trying to cram that in there. Um, this side is going to have to be multiplied by 1 minus cosine of theta. And might have a little bit of extra room here. Um, let's take this line out here. I'll try to expand this. Uh, okay, so what am I going to get here? Um, in the numerator, I'm going to get sine squared of theta. Uh, the denominator is going to be sine times 1 minus cosine of theta. For the time being, I'm not going to multiply that out. Uh, I may need to multiply it out later, uh, but I'm going to have a common denominator, and frankly, I just kind of want to leave it right now. So, uh, when you add with fractions, you keep the denominators the same. So there's my common denominator. Uh, over here, I'm going to have 1 times 1. Uh, this is plus. So I'm going to have 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 times negative cosine theta, which is negative cosine theta. Uh, plus, let's see, it's an outer. Um, actually, I'm going to have another minus cosine of theta. And then at the end, negative times a negative is a plus cosine squared of theta, okay? Uh, all of this is supposed to be equal to 2 cosecant of theta, so you want to remember that. Um, okay, a little bit of grouping. I notice I have a sine squared and I have a cosine squared of theta. That's equal to 1. Uh, I notice I have 2 minus cosines of theta. That's minus 2 cosine of theta. Uh, so anyway, that's equal to 1. So I now have 1 plus the old one I had minus the 2 cosine of theta all over sine of theta times 1 minus cosine theta. Again, you can simplify this down, but I think you're going to see later. Usually having something in a factored form allows you to do some simplification. And this is not a fraction, so I'd like it to stay uh, in a factored form so I can maybe divide out a denominator here. Uh, and that's supposed to equal 2 cosecant of theta. And a little combining here. 1 plus 1 is 2. I could have gone ahead and written that as 2 before. And the big thing I notice here now is um, I can do a little bit of, uh, notice I have a 1 minus cosine theta here, and I almost have that except for these 2's. I can factor out those 2's. And so that's going to be 2 times 1 minus cosine of theta all over sine of theta times 1 minus cosine of theta, and that's supposed to equal 2 cosecant of theta. And notice, now I can divide this out of the numerator and denominator. Uh, I'm left with 2 sine of theta. No, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm left with 2 over sine of theta. 
equals 2 cosecant of theta. And again, I'm kind of running out of room here, but basically I know that sine of theta, or 1 over cosine theta, is the same thing as cosecant. Okay, so if I have 2 over sine of theta, I can move that sine of theta to the numerator as a cosecant, and that's going to equal the 2 cosecant of theta that I'm supposed to have on the other side. So that's the idea in this case. Get a common denominator. Could be kind of complicated. Remember, when you add, you keep a common denominator. You add or subtract your fractions. I had this kind of complicated thing multiplied out here. and showed a little bit of simplification. Um, again, you might want to have an extra step where you show these relationships being grouped together. Uh, to fit that on the board, I kind of skipped over that. But that's the general idea that you want to try to show. Okay, let's look at the last one. Uh, the last example here is secant of theta over sine of theta minus sine of theta over cosine of theta. And so I'm going to rewrite this. I'm noticing the same kind of thing in this example um, that I saw in the previous example, and that is um, I thought maybe I could move the secant down here as a cosine, uh, but cosine times sine is not a relationship that I have here, and so I'm not going to make that replacement. Um, once again, I'm going to find a common denominator. Uh, this is actually going to be an easier common denominator to find because I just have to multiply one side by cosine, and remember top and bottom need to be multiplied by the same thing. Uh, this side is going to be multiplied by sine of theta. And what I end up getting then is um, secant theta cosine of theta over sine of theta cosine of theta minus sine squared of theta over sine of theta cosine of theta. It's all supposed to equal cotangent of theta. And now I have a common denominator here. I can subtract my numerators. Um, that's 1 over cosine, which is just going to be 1. So I'm going to write this as 1 minus sine squared of theta all over sine of theta cosine of theta equals cotangent of theta. And I'm almost done. Um, I want to get some cancellations here. And I could possibly do a few different things here. I think the best thing to do would be to get rid of the subtraction here. And I notice that's the same thing as cosine squared of theta. So I'm going to write this as cosine squared of theta over sine of theta cosine of theta equals cotangent theta. Uh, you may want to change this a little bit. Cosine squared is cosine multiplied by itself. Uh, and now I can see that I can divide a cosine of theta out of the numerator and denominator. Uh, what happens? I'm left with a cosine of theta over a sine of theta, which is the same thing as cotangent of theta. And uh, so now we can fill in that last line and show that cotangent is equal to cotangent. And I have my identity proved at that point. So again, lots of different things to look for. Um, factoring, multiplying out, if you do have something that's already factored, um, looking for greatest common, uh, well, looking for common denominators and adding fractions. Um, breaking up a numerator of a sum or difference into two fractions with common denominators, um, replacing reciprocal functions, all kinds of different things that you can do uh, that in the end allow you to write these in different forms. But that is the main idea. Hopefully those examples have been helpful.